Hi, I'm Andre J, and today we're going to talk about presets and macros in Gravity Waves. Um, so Gravity Waves is a video mixer and feedback video delay, dual video delay, uh, 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 feedback machine. Uh, maybe it's a video synthesizer. I don't know. Um, you can call it that if you want. Um, I might. I might not. Um, other people may disagree with you. Uh, 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 who cares? Really? Um, <laughs> but yeah, Gravity Waves, uh, uh, I sell it. Um, it's something I design and manufacture and uh, uh, sell. It's also open source. If you want to make your own, you can follow the links uh, below to uh, uh, figure out how to, to, to put it together. It's medium level simple. Um, there's, you know, it'll, it'll take some time. It's mildly expensive. Uh, but it's definitely doable. I know many people have. Um, <clears throat> probably easier if you build a wave pool first uh, and then build a gravity waves after that. But yeah, um, but you can also buy it from me sometimes. Uh, a, a, a little bit of an update on what things are happening with my shop. Um, I think how things are going to go for the next couple years seen as it seems like um, it's pretty stable and easy uh, to get a hold of components these days. Um, fingers crossed, knock on wood. Um, what I'm going to be doing is uh, doing pre-orders all the time and then two or three times a year I'll do production runs for like a month or two at a time. Um, so what will happen is if you buy things during the pre-order time it'll be cheaper. Uh, cause, and then you'll get a no, you'll know the, then and I'll have production time scheduled. So if you buy something, say when this comes out, my next production run, uh, this is 2024. This is going to be coming out, uh, uh, late April, early May, 2024. The next production run will be in, um, October, November. So you can put down money right now. It'll be less than what you would pay for it in, uh, during the production run. Um, to reserve one and then it'll ship in uh, October um, and then if you buy one during the production run uh, there'll be uh, it'll be more expensive but then it'll be like a two three week turnover from money down to like getting something shipped so um, that's gonna be the trade-off you can put money down in advance to reserve something and it'll be cheaper or you can buy something when production is happening and it'll be more expensive and you'll get it faster uh, so that's how things go um, so that'll be for Gravity Waves, Wave Pool HD. I should have Artificial Life and Temporal Vortex HD up for sales. I'll have a VSC Jet Master System and the Viserpi Master System up for sale then too. Um, yeah, and the rest of the Wave Pools and Auto Waves and all that shit. Um, so that's that. Um, so if you've already owned a Gravity Waves or you bought one of them that just came out, um, then you uh, will be introduced to the macros and the save states or presets, which I'm going to talk about in this video. Um, cool things about macros and presets. Uh, uh, it comes with 25 presets, and I'm going to go through all the different presets pretty quickly and just kind of like show you what's going on with them and then just go into a little bit of detail on what's up with MIDI macros. Um, and then uh, the other thing is that if you join my Patreon and stay in the Patreon for at least six months, you'll get access to more presets that I design. Um, so uh, uh, there's 25 that come with the normal thing, and those are for everybody. Um, and then I'll keep making a bunch and just keep handing them out to people at the Patreon. So if you want more presets, uh, you should join the Patreon. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I figured that having these presets and having the macros, I did a lot of performances with Gravity Waves last year, um, and it was really getting to be a thing where those were, it was, it was getting to be a pain in the ass to do live performance with Gravity Waves and not have both of those things at hand. So it was really like, uh, had to happen. <laughs> but without further ado, let's talk about some presets. So up at the top here, you can see the GUI is over there on that side of the screen. Um, and you can see right at the top next to the draw block three, here's where you select something that you're going to save to. And then you would hit this uh, save button to save. I'm not going to save anything right now. Down here, here's where you load things. You select one to load. 
and then you hit this load button. So let me just show you how that goes. I hit reset all and we're going to load the first one here, 000 filter freak. So we load that and we can see what's going on is it loads uh, 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 not just a bunch of settings, but it loads the macros as well. So if we go down here, I've got my MIDI controller and I can control delay time. You can see that's moving around up and down. I can control key threshold. So that's how much get key, gets keyed out. So if we do key threshold and then sweep it up like that, and we'll get this kind of thing. And then we have all of these other controls where I can control how much posterization there is, how much brightness. So super posterized. Um, we can control how sharp things are. Uh, control the blur radius, blur amount. Um, so this one I called Filter Freak. This is just like a way to really kind of like slow down and see what's going on with like all the different filtering stuff. Um, uh, yeah, and this is the first one I put in here. So that's Filter Freak. Um, let me just reset that. Let's check out number two, Serial Frame Buffer Times 2. So we load this one. What's going on here is that there's, I've got one frame buffer running into another frame buffer. So we've got dual delays happening one into another. So we can kind of do this sort of like uh, 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 feedback painting. Let me move this MIDI controller around here so I can really get into it. So I'm able to control um, dual feedback with the same controller here. So we can also do stuff like if I want to take delay time frame buffer two, and then I'll start to move um, frame buffer one around. That's pretty cool. So this was, these presets I made, a lot of them I made to be like examples of like, this is sort of like techniques that I think it's probably good for everyone to be learning. Uh, if you're using gravity waves, um, if you've read the manual before, you know that there's like a bunch of sort of walkthrough things that I did. Um, the walkthroughs, I don't think people really liked those so much. Um, <laughs> uh, too much reading, I guess, too much technical stuff. Um, so I figured these presets would be like a little bit of a more better way for people to learn how um, I think is like cool stuff you can do with gravity waves. So. This is a uh, uh, serial feedback running one frame buffer into another. Let's see, dual invert. So here's a pretty fun one where I've got um, two inverted feedback things happening and there being a, a difference mixed with one another. And then uh, the controls for everything are for LFOs, amps. So the LFO amps are what we're gonna be controlling here with the macros. Uh, not just like the positions itself. So this is gonna be kind of like free running. You can turn up some kaleidoscoping. Change the slice. So yeah, we've got final mix on here. So you can kind of, we can do difference mixing in a couple of different ways. That's kind of interesting. So that's dual invert. You got this one, basically wave pool. It's exactly what it sounds like. This is just pretty much the same controls that wave pool has. And it's just one frame buffer. Um, the only kind of main differences from this and wave pool is that um, I've added blur controls in. So you could play around with the blurring and the kaleidoscope in here. Cause I thought those are two kind of cool things that like, um, uh, what do you call it? Wave pool doesn't have. That would be cool to, 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 to play around with in a similar setting. So I don't have the same kind of like chaotic hue controls, uh, exactly the same things happening in um, gravity waves as I do in wave pool. So I figured this would be like a better use of the, 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 the controls. So that's basically wave pool. 
Also, pretty much every single one of the other save states on here, they're all just copies of basically Wavepool. So they're all like a pretty good place to start from. If you're trying to make your own presets, is you can grab one of the, 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 the empty presets and start with that and then modify that. <clears throat> so we can go back up. So let's go back up. Basically Wavepool. Uh, Radonk Fractal. Pretty much exactly what uh, it sounds like. Ridiculous fractal shit's going on. So we can control sort of like where is the Y, where is the X. Um, overall brightness. And then we've got blur amount. just for doing the kind of like ridiculous fractal painting mode change delay time I use delay time a lot in my presets because I think it's really important to be able to play with all the different speeds and see how things go at different uh, speeds because like certain things are better if it's really really fast feedback and certain things are uh, pretty cool if it's like much slower feedback. I think the super fractally stuff, for my, for my opinion, the super fractally things are way cooler with very slow feedback. Um, there's Redonk uh, uh, Fractal LFO. And it's the same thing as the other one, except for all of the um, geometry controls are now for like the LFO amps. We've got free running LFOs happening, so it's uh, going to be like a bit more animated, not just you controlling things. Uh, the sort of takeaway from this one to learn is like um, you can kind of like just set the LFOs to be free running and then just have amp controls on here. So that's a pretty cool thing you can do. Um, blobs on blobs. So, what do we got here? This is making really blobby feedback with uh, frame buffer one and then doing trails off of that in frame buffer two. So we've got delay time for frame buffer two here. So you can kind of control how far back does the, the trails go or have it just be fast. Um, and then we can kind of control the blur amount here and that'll do different things for like the patterns that form, controlling blur amount and sharp amount. It's how these bl blobs will form and disappear. Um, kind of play around with like the X and the Y here. <laughs> Brightness way up. Uh, so that's that one right there. Uh, we've got extrude. So this is doing feedback extruding off of the input. So we've got kind of like the blob. So this is playing around with the key level or the key order. So we've got key order going on top, feedback on top of the input. So we're able to do this kind of like extrusion stuff. Um, let's see, we could do like different amounts of sharpness. Um, that'll sort of like affect how much of this comes through here. Turn up the brightness a bit, play around with the hue shaper. We're doing some stretching here. So let's extrude. We've got horizontal slit scan here. So what's going on with this one is we're doing sort of like the slit scan feedback off the side here. So you can kind of like control how much delay time you've got. So 
You can do like this sort of like normal fast slit scan, but it starts to get more interesting if you slow it down. And then you can have some pretty minimal stuff on the side here. Uh, it works really nice if you've got like a video oscillator or something over there uh, running off of that. You can control how much X you've got. Bring it on in, get it a little tighter. Another fun one, did I put that on the stretch on here? I did. You can do X stretch, so you can have it kind of like going into like a vanishing point in the center. <laughs> so this is kind of like that squeeze wipe on an MX-50. brightness a bit here. Woo so that's this horizontal slit scan one. And this is pretty cool to work with the really slow delays. HSB colorizer, so this is just like everything just kind of set for doing like the colorizing stuff. So we can control the different levels of uh, 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 saturation and brightness and hue for each, uh, uh, every one of these um, bands here. This is a uh, pretty helpful for folks who want to like mess around a lot with the colorizer feature just use this as a colorizer for a second um, also got RGB colorizer mode so RGB colorizer mode of course works a little different um, you're not working with HSB space you're working directly with the RGB values of each band so you can do some pretty weird stuff some pseudo solarizing here so that's RGB colorizer We've got ripples here so, uh, so this is we're doing some um, we've got like some inverted uh, feedback being like diff mixed with uh, 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 this sort of like uh, temporal filter super blobby feedback and then there's a uh, the, the, the RGB colorizer kind of running in the background there. Um, we kind of control some LFOs for this feedback here. <clears throat> so that's a pretty interesting kind of like spatialization. So this is an example of using colorizers, using feedback, and using the, 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 the independent uh, uh, feedback in both channels and mixing them together to create patterns. Uh, number 12, Mirror Goop. Uh, it's mirrory and it's goopy. <laughs> it's just like super goopy feedback. And we've got this mirrored. Um, and then we got here. We can do this kind of like zoom out. Oh, yeah. So pretty, pretty cheesy stuff here. So it's kind of like the usual old like mixer feedback kind of thing. But like really ridiculously over the top <laughs> and most of the controls here are just like for the hue shifting stuff because that's mostly like what's going to be uh, interesting to control here All right. malt melt so using malt mixing and then also the sort of same kind of like uh, feedback layered on top of the input <clears throat> for this one we can control like X position, Y position. Blur amount. And 
this temporal filter. Woo! So that was, this is kind of an example of how to use the different blend modes with feedback. Uh, solitaire, uh, I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> this is mostly a joke here. So, um, but just like an example of like what you can do with the LFOs uh, on the inputs. So there's no like, uh, uh, there's no controls for the, the, the frame buffer other than just like delay time. So we're just moving the input around using one of the LFOs and uh, uh, setting a delay, uh, different amounts of delay on the, the, the feedback being kind of keyed into the background here. So that's solitaire, kaleidoscope. Uh, this is using the uh, dodge blend mode and doing some kaleidoscoping off of that. So we're not kaleidoscoping the, the, the feedback here. We're kaleidoscoping... Wait, I think we are kaleidoscoping the feedback and the... Um, uh, 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 well, actually, let's, let's just see here. Uh, yeah, no, we're not kaleidoscoping the feedback. We're just kaleidoscoping the, um, the, the input. An example of kind of like what dodge does when you use it in a feedback loop. Uh, flip and diff. So this is just an example of why flip and mirror are two different things. Um, when you use them with like uh, the independent feedback channels, this one's pretty great. Um, I used to do this a lot with just camera feedback and mixers. You can control the mix amount. So this is also difference mixing as well. So I wasn't able to difference mix on the mixers, but I was able to use, um, instead of difference mixing, I was just doing blending, doing a linear interpolation with the solar eyes on one channel, which ends up being kind of similar to difference mixing, not quite, but pretty cool stuff. Um, and this was just with camera feedback, and I wanted to try to figure out a way to recreate that in... Um, in gravity waves so that was this mode here flip and diff leaving balls um, this is just kind of this one's pretty silly it's kind of screen savory uh, but I found it to be really satisfying I think it would be pretty cool if you had like some sort of like really hard-edged video oscillator going in here as sort of like the seed or just like a really minimal little like video feedback thing or even just like point a camera at a black wall and like point a laser pointer around to have that sort of going off of this, but you get this really kind of interesting like weaving pattern happening there. Uh, this one's called three tabs. Um, yeah, this is just like more ridiculous fractals. Uh, we've got really, really long delays on this one. So this is one of those things where like, it'll just kind of like keep doing its thing um, and just get like uh, uh, more and more fractally uh, as you let things build up. <clears throat> so this is the full four seconds of delay um, happening here. Uh, let's see, self mix. So this is no feedback whatsoever. This is just mixing an input with itself using blend modes and using LFOs and flips to kind of like show how you can compose um, just like do like weird compositional things with uh, 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 without using any feedback whatsoever. Uh, unpeel the onion. Uh, this is one where I've got um, LFOs on the delay or on the, the the key threshold, and this is being two levels of feedback one into another. So it's just going to be sort of like peeling back the input and like feeding back off of that. Uh, uh, slowly going back and forth on dual channels. That's unpeel the onion. Point your camera at the screen. This, of course, is about doing some camera feedback. Um, so, uh, 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 yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is just for doing weird camera stuff. Five tabs so this is similar to the three tabs one but um it's a little bit more 
<laughs> what can I say? <laughs> this one's gonna get pretty crazy. Uh, I wanted to make sure to put a couple of examples of like how do I work with like the full four seconds of delay in here, and that's what three tabs and five tabs are both about. Is um, how do you do the kind of like how do you do intentional things with the really long delays? And I know most people don't seem to have the patience to like really sit and let things build up. Uh, luckily I do, so uh, uh, now we've got presets, so I can share my patience with you, the Gravity Waves user. Uh, rotations, number 23. Oh yeah, this one's pretty silly. <laughs> this is kind of another example of like using the input, um, having like uh, 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 an LFO on the motion of the input. Um, and using that as kind of like a seed for like the, the, the feedback. So we're just rotating the heck out of this input here. Um, control the, the, the amp and the rate of it. So, woo. And we can also control uh, delay time. So we can see the delay itself isn't rotating. We're just feeding it something that's rotating. Now I'm moving the rotation of the delay, and it's got the ro the mo motion of the rotation kind of being fed into it too, so it's pretty chaotic. Uh, 24, analog styles. So this is one that's just kind of like, um, just kind of looks like mixer feedback. <laughs> just tried to do something that, 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 that felt really like uh, analog. Um, and then we've got a couple of controls here for doing the weird kind of painting stuff. And then advanced slit scan. So this is sort of a mode where I'm showing sort of like how you can take that basic slit scanny stuff uh, uh, and then build off of that using both frame buffers. So we can kind of move like got controls of this Y on frame buffer one that we can kind of move around. We can also zoom it in and out. Blur and sharpen. Oh yeah, rotate. <laughs> Having the weird rotational stuff and this kind of feedback is pretty darn cool. Uh, we can play around with a bit of the positioning of frame buffer two. Do a rotation off of that one too. We got two rotations. Looks like really weird tongues. Yeah, that's advanced slit scan. And then, yeah, that's the last of the, 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 the basic presets. Uh, now say I do something, um, so let's say I'm going to start with number 26 here and say I want to, let me load, and it's this wave pool, basically wave pool uh, control scheme, and I want to change something about it and save that as my own preset. Um, Let's say I want it to have uh, uh, invert the color here. Good old fashioned inverting. <clears throat> I 
and now I want to save that as my own. So I want this to be number 26. I just go back up to the save here, um, select that one, and then I hit save, and then reset them all. And if I load that, it's loaded the same way with the exact same settings that I had. Um, you notice you can't actually do a renaming thing on here because I couldn't really figure out a slick way to do it, but check out the manual. I'll tell you how to rename stuff in there. Um, not quite the most interesting thing to have in this video here. But yeah, that's just a bit of, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Um, show off how macros work, show off how presets work, uh, and then just do a tiny little spiel on like uh, uh, pre-orders and how production schedules is going to go. So uh, for folks listening to this when it drops in late April, early May 2024, next production run is going to be like October, November. And then after that, I'll do a production run in like February through April. Um, and yeah, it'll be a thing where you can pre-order in advance of production run for a lower price and then purchase during the production run uh, and get it shipped to you sooner for a higher price. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. And you can also just DIY build your own at any point. Um, and yeah, you can also sign up for the Patreon at any point too uh, and help fund development of video synthesizers and uh, educational edutainmental videos like this in the future. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this video. Let me just go out on a fun little filter freak and let me just show you why I like this filter freak. So let's just slow down and take a look at uh, 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 the, 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 what's going on with the, the filter stuff. So I like this one because it really lets you kind of like luxuriate in how the reaction diffusion patterns form uh, with each echo. I'm not gonna say anything else during this video. I'm just gonna like watch it go. You can turn it off now if you're still watching and you're expecting me to say more things. I'm not even going to like move the controls. I'm just going to watch it. That's how good my presets are.